Right, hello everyone, it's Anthony Abel here, AKW Blaze91, and <clears throat> today guys, I'm finally doing another one of these Games I Bought video because, look here, I bought a massive truck of games <sighs> this month. And I'm, and I'm going to go through each one, and I'm going to talk about them all individually. <clears throat> now, I did buy... Now, last month, I did buy one game. But I didn't think there was enough material to work with to make it. So, um... I kind of thought, I'll put, <clears throat> I'll put, I'll put it off and just, um... Save it for another video. So here you are, guys. We're finally doing a, I'm finally doing a game to bought through May video. But I'm going to count the game of the game of bought in April as well, and you're going to see it. The game of bought in April. I'm going to talk about what I have been doing as well and my current plans. <sighs> and well, let's just get let's get started because I got a massive amount here. Now, first of all, I'm going to talk about the game I bought in April, and that is Dead Island Double Pack. Now, I swapped my Game of the Year of Dead Island One and my standard copy of Dead Island Reptile because this one has both Dead Island and Dead Island Reptile together, and with all their DLC content <clears throat> intact and all of them both games have all their dlc and extra content included all on all on one disc so it's good so that's pretty good i got both of the games on one disc with all their content and uh, i kind of think i spoke about it when i bought them it's this um, zombie survival game where you're one of the survivors and you've got to uh, survive against these onslaught of zombies using melee weapons and, and such. It's alright. Just not very good compared to um, the Left 4 Dead series. But still, it's, but still, it's fine. It's fun. It's enjoyable with friends. I've already registered these two games for trophies, but they're not bad. I'll eventually do a full run of these games. See what I think of them. <clears throat> so yeah, got got this for. I think it's eight quid in CX or six quid in C CX. I think it's eight quid. I am I am chat. I need to check. Oh well. And also, and now we're on to the to the meat of um of the month. I bought a ton. I bought about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, and twenty-two. About about twenty-two games. Plus one of the games I did buy was one thing for the package that I wanted. So we're gonna get round. I'll we'll get. But I'll eventually get round to that. But in either way. This is what I got. I got we're gonna start off with Battlefield Hardline. Now I've got this on my PlayStation 4, Battlefield Hardline, but I've got the PlayStation 3 version as the PS3 version and the PS4 versions of Battlefield Hardline have separate trophies, so I figured I'd get this. So Battlefield Hardline is a cops and robber. Cops and Robbers, um, store, um, based, um, shooter in the Battle of the Battlefield series, 
Well, this time, one where there is um, the cops and then there is the bad guys. You got a story, you got a good story, you got a storyline that focuses on a couple of police officers. Although I've only seen uh, prologue chapters just to see this game working on my PS3. And it's, and it's pretty good. It's alright. <clears throat> I enjoy it bit of it, quite a bit of it. Although I can't say too much because I only played like the first five minutes of it. Just so you can see it working and I got, got, my, got my first trophy on it. Now then, I also got Escape Dead Island. This one I saw on a top 10 list of top 10 worst games of 2014. And no joke, it is a bad looking game. It is a bad game. Gameplay is a very repetitive bore, and and it's got a very, it's got a very weak execution, very lazy enemies, borderline boring stealth, and and action gameplay. It's just very very poorly executed, and this is a spin-off game of um, what is it? Um, the, de the Dead Island, the Dead Island games, including the original games and the upcoming Dead Island 2, which has been in development limbo for um for a long time. No one said any words about it. I mean, like you, we haven't got any announcements of when it's going to be, when it's finally going to be released or something. It's just been in development limbo for quite a long time, and this game is just lackluster to say the least. But I did see this on Thomas Bybee's trophy list, so I figured I'd just get this one. I got that one for a pound, believe it or not. So I thought, eh, alright, okay then. Next up, Borderlands the pre-sequel. I think this one is supposed to take place either between... I think between the original game and the second game. Mm, so and so this one I got one pound fifty, so that's a pretty good price for it. One pound fifty. <laughs> yeah, where right, I got the DLC code for it as well. That's pretty good. And I've only played like the first ten minutes of it to see it working and record my first trophy. It is a interesting loot shoot. Borderlands games are very interesting loot shooters where you're exploring around these environments. To doing quests, fighting enemies, collecting all kinds of different loot and weapons, <clears throat> and it's still pretty fun. And there's a Borderlands 3 coming out, so I'm ho so I'm going to hope to get Borderlands the Handsome Collection for the PS4, which will have Borderlands 2 and and this game with it on the PS4 for separate trophies. So that'll be good. I'm, I'm, so that's pretty good. So I'm hoping to do that. Right, and next up, I'm going to talk about this one on the bottom first. I got Battlefield 4. Now again, much like um, Battlefield um, Hardline, I also have this game on the PS3. Now I've got this on the PS4 because, because both versions of this are trophy, shit, are trophy separate. They, they both have separate trophies, so if you want to collect trophies on the PS3, but you also want to collect trophies on the PS4, you can. And I will play through the PS3 version first for the trophies and then eventually I'll do the PS4 version for the trophies afterwards. I've already played the first level and so far it's alright. I did hear like some things about it like like this you know day one it launched it had all these bugs, glitches and the game kept on crashing even during the single player, it, ca it crashes a lot. But still, Battlefield 4, eh, it's alright. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's okay. I'm not going to really argue too much about it. Alright, I'm going to put that there. Alright, now next up, Destiny the Collection. Now I've already spoke about this in my, some of my one of my previous Games of Bought videos. But why I'm showing you this right now is because a couple of weeks ago I went into Newport 
and I found some, I found an unused copy of it, and I found a used copy of this, which actually had the DLC codes unused, so I thought, I figured I'd buy them, <clears throat> so I figured I'd buy them, <clears throat> and, then and then try them, and then um, instant use them on my, on my account, on my PlayStation account, and yeah, they were unused, so I figured I'd use them, and I got pretty much everything from the box, as advertised. Destiny, Destiny the Dark Below, House of Wolves, The Taken King, and the all new one which I wanted to play, The Have the Rise of Iron. So now I have the entire Destiny 1 story ready to play from the box on the PS4. But again, I also got Destiny on the PS3 as well. They don't they do share trophy lists, but if you want to play the rise of, and the rise of iron and get all of the trophies it's fair to go straight to the ps4 and that way you'll get all the trophy <clears throat> all the available all the unlockable trophies right and destiny is a still remarkable shooter <clears throat> much like borderlands it's a, it's a loot shooter where you do quests you fight enemies you are cooperatively in but you do have the opportunity but you do have the option also to go do PvP matches as well. <clears throat> and and I haven't really got far into the story in Destiny. But I'm hoping to because rumor has it that this might be a destiny 3 coming out so i might have to go through this game and destiny 2 as well so that's pretty good and i got the dlcs both mm -hmm. all these DS, D, on the dlc for this game and from the taken king as well for a fiver mm -hmm. but but the boxes didn't have the discs but i got the dlc from them so, and that's pretty much, <clears throat> and I've ripped up the boxes, and I've got them, and I've ripped up the, um, the covers from them, and I'm using those as empty cases, as spares. You know, if I buy second-hand games that just don't have their cases. So, that's pretty good, that's a pretty good find here. Next up, Metal of Honor Heroes for the PSP. Now, I was searching recently through the PS PlayStation Network Store, that they were having a discount deal on some of the PS3 um, games, <clears throat> one of the PS3 games, Soul Calibur 2 HD Online, Soul Calibur 2 HD Online, um, for for under a pound, for about under two pound. So I figured I'd get that, and I did look, and I was looking around the PSP aisle, and realized that they had a few PSP games that they can play on the PS um, Vita. This apparently wasn't one of them. One of the games that was listed as PS Vita compatible. So what did I ended up doing? I was wasting eleven quid on on a digital version that wouldn't work with the PS Vita. Stupid me. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know what the hell I was thinking. But oh well. I ended up eventually because I wanted to save my memory on my PS. Hey. Oh, I just noticed a little wrap there that wasn't. That wasn't taken out. Oh, I'll put it in a bit in just a moment. Um, so what I ended up doing is, just to save memory on my PSP, because I haven't got a big memory card for it, is just eventually just decided to just down, purchase a physical copy of it, and I'm going to keep hold of this from now on. I did used to have it, but until then I saw that the, until I had the PS Vita and I realized some of the PSP games I could download on the digital store, right around there. <clears throat> but I didn't know. But I didn't realize that there's like a certain like they like somebody didn't enable every PSP game on the PS PlayStation Network Store to be compatible with the PS Vita, and I don't know why they did that. Probably just some marketing strategy, I think. But uh, either way, who knows? But either way, I did play the first, um, I did play a couple of matches on this. Boot bot matches. The AI bots to see it working. And it works just fine. Don't have any issues with it. So no, no biggies. Now let me just put this little wrapper in the bin. 
Yeah, just uh, be right back. And I'm keeping an eye on the timer. That's good. Only just, only just a few minutes. We're only 15 minutes in. That's good. All right. I apologize for that. I dropped the cam. The camera just suddenly fell down. I am going to stand for my PS Vita to um, hold it. Proper stand to hold it up while it's um, recording. Oh well. <coughs> no worries. You wait. I'm back in. I'm back now. Down. Back sitting down now. On the bed. And we've got a PS Vita game now. Oh, pardon me for that. Anyway, we got PS Vita game this time. And it's Resistance Burning Skies. Resistance Burning Skies is a spin off game in the, of the Resistance series of games that originally started out pretty good on the PlayStation 3. It's a portable, it's, a, it's an FPS game where it uses, um, what is it, the touch controls as well for um, performing certain actions. And it's got a storyline where you, where you reach, um, which focuses on Tom Riley, a lone firefighter who's, who's caught in the middle of the war against the Chimera. Against the Chimera, the guy, the little alien things that have been invading, the aliens that have been invading the um, the, city, the cities, and it's and it's not bad for what I played so far. Resistance Burning Skies isn't a bad game. It's got a couple of unique features to it, like um, weapons have a secondary function, which is done using the touch screen on the Vita. Um, and you can and you can upgrade certain and you can upgrade your weapons with these cores you can find throughout the campaign. It's got a sing, it's got a multiplayer camp it's got a multiplayer online component to it. But I, but mine didn't come with a pass. But my copy didn't come with a pass, so I will have to buy a pass online to play the to play the online component of it. Um, and I did have a sneak peek at the trophies. It does look pretty simple, and I don't think. Uh, <clears throat> oh, and I'm not sure if I remember now. If there was like a multiplayer trophy or something that I could do. Oh well, but either way, glad to have this in my collection. <clears throat> glad to have this one. All right, now then, ne the next one is something that I've seen. Seen. I just figured. Oh well, I might as well pick it up and purchase it anyway. The Witch and the Hundred Knight on the PS3. I got this for 10 quid in CEX. And this was one Kyle, my nephew Kyle commented on. Um, I've already played the prologue of this to see this one working and to get a couple of trophies out of it. This one's a dark fantasy action RPG made by Nis made by Nis, the same guys who actually worked on the Disgaea series, or Disgaea, whatever. I have no idea what they're supposed to be pronounced, because I've never played a Disgaea game before. But in either way, this is one of the um, other off, one of their other offerings. This game focuses, this game focuses on you as the Hundred Knight, who serves the evil forest witch, Matalia, Matalia. Metallia or something. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Who is, whose goal is to, to inhabit the entire world into an entire forest swamp. <clears throat> yeah. Go fig. Go figure. And for what I've played of this so far, the story's alright. Gameplay gameplay's a little bit simpler. The gameplay is a little simplistic and more repetitive, repetitive and so far, but it's an RPG, so what do you kinda expect? <clears throat> no, I've and, and I've only played and again, like I said, I've only played the prologue chapter to see of working. And for what I played of it, it's alright. And people did like it because there's a sequel, uh, for the, and there's a remake on the PS4, the Revival Edition. 
which I think updates the game to 1080p and with 60 frames per second, and it can play in 60 frames per second. Unlike on the PS3 version, which is capped at 25 frames per second, because we're because this is the PAL version you're seeing, which runs slower than the US versions. But anyway, for a good little not bad one to have, <clears throat> add one to have. Now next four here are, are original Xbox games. There are two games I've got here, part of Tom Clancy games. I have Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Free Black Arrow and Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Iron Island Thunder. This is one of the this one is the expansion to the these both these two games are like expansions to their main game. This one is like an expansion pack of sorts to Rainbow Six Free, which I which I which I, which that one I have on my GameCube. And this one is an expansion pack to the original Ghost Recon, which I think is on the Xbox's 360, is, which I think is also on the Xbox as well. But I'm not 100% sure if the original Ghost Recon or Ghost Recon 2 is, is Xbox 360 compatible, because I'm using the Xbox 360 as my platform for playing my, my Xbox games on. So I have no idea if they're going to work or not. Both of these games are... Alright, they're Tom Clancy tactical first person shooters where you go in tactically, <clears throat> you know, break into buildings as quietly as conversely as you can. And oof, I'm not 100% sure now. Um, uh, yeah, breaking the door. Breaking things, defuse bombs, rescue hostages, and so forth. <clears throat> it's all it's all Tom Clancy stuff, <clears throat> but it's still pretty. But they're still pretty good for what they are. So, and I got these as additional, and I got these, these two, fifty pence each, and CX. That's pretty good. <clears throat> and right, the next one I also got is Conflict Desert Storm One. This one I also picked up for 50 pence. This one is played in third person or first person. But I think first per third person is way much better. Playing it in third person is advisable because the aiming in first person is just slow beyond belief. Like it takes five like it takes five years just to be able to turn your character around in first person. <clears throat> I mean it's just insane. But some missions, some parts of this aren't too bad. <clears throat> but this one is just filled with. But this mission, but this game here, it has some several annoyances. Like enemies could literally, <clears throat> like so many enemies can cloud up the battlefield. At at a time, and you've only got like a certain amount of ammo you can you, you can hold just to just to be able to deal with that. I managed to get past the first level by some miracle. But I don't know how I'll be able to get past the other missions with that kind, of, the same kind of luck. But anyway, yeah, this one works on my 360, no problems. But this next one, Delta Force Black Hawk Down. Doesn't work on my Xbox 360. I thought I'd buy this, just because I think, eh, this might work. Well, this might work fine on my Xbox 360, just fine. But I didn't look up on the Xbox compatibility list for the free for the Xbox 360. <clears throat> so I ended up just blindly picking this one, <clears throat> hoping I cross my fingers that it worked, but to no avail. Mm. So I can't say so. I can, so I will have to take that game back. And now we're on to the PlayStation 3 games, the other PS3 e games I picked up. And these ones I picked up for a very, very cheap price. Uh, and some of them you just can't fault with what they're worth. Right. So first up, GTA 5. 
I got this for 99 pence. <laughs> the box is in a different language, however, but the game itself is still in English, so I'm happy with that. It did have some DLC codes, but they were used up. But I got this game for 99 pence, and I can't go wrong with it. I played the prologue chapter to see it working, and it's got some pretty good shooting mechanics, played in third person, and some driving stages played in, and it's all done in an open world setting where you can just do whatever you want. And it's pretty good in Grand Theft Auto V. It's my first taste of the Grand Theft Auto series, and it's not bad. Next up, the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. This is the PlayStation 3 port of Skyrim. Now, there is a thing to say. Skyrim is amazing. The Skyrim, the Elder Scrolls games are quite good. <coughs> Skyrim's got a whole bunch of content that you can actually do. You got the you not just you don't just have the story to play through, but you got multiple factions you can do. You got every different. Um, um, what is it? You've got um, all the different um, side quests and dragons you can fight as well. <clears throat> it's just a multitude of content on this game that you can possibly think of. And I got this, ninety-nine pounds. How can I go wrong? How can I say no to that? <clears throat> but with good things, there comes the bad things about it. The, the single biggest thing that kills this game is its optimization on the PlayStation 3. All the Bethesda games on the PS3 are very, very poorly optimized. They have terrible frame rates. They're buggy. They're glitchy and buggy as hell. They're glitchy and buggy as hell. And at times they, and at times they just crash out. And they have game killing bug, and they have game breaking glitches. And alongside that, some of the glitches are very game breaking. And the thing, and and the PS3 version of Skyrim, it has a terrible bug, where like the more progress you make into this game, the worse the frame rate gets. almost to the point of being unplayable so it's not the most so it's not the so to people so to gamers so in all things Skyrim on the PS3 might play might play might play all right when you first start it up but when you get very further into the game all, all the really really buggy stuff will really come to come into play and it will almost make this game unplayable. You have to really have patience to go through the PS3 version of this. Due to how poorly, due to the awful optimization this, this port has. So congratulations, Professor, on the crappy PS3 port. Next up, Two Worlds 2. More like Two Worlds Too Soon. <laughs> I know that I nicked that off um, Pro Jared, but. It's kind of true. I want. I actually got this game, Two Worlds Two, for forty nine pence. Quite a bargain, eh? <laughs> and Two Worlds Two. It's not the worst RPG I've ever played, and it's certainly not one of the better one. And it's certainly not the best either. And it's not a great game, nor a good game, nor a bad game either. It's just. It's got a lot. It's got a lot of deep, deep problems. The original Two Worlds had a fair share amount of problems when it, when it when it was out on the Xbox 360. <clears throat> but this for, but the sequel managed to make its release on the PS3, and I did, and I did the gap just that. I got it on the PS3, 49 pence. And I actually did read this, and I did watch Professional Jared's video about this, and the original. Two Worlds isn't great. It isn't good. It's more, Two Worlds is more like a poor man's Elder Scrolls Oblivion. 
if that makes a lot of sense. Because it copies, it takes so many elements as Elder Scrolls Oblivion. That a lot of the ideas were not fully fleshed out. And, they were, and a lot of them were just not very well executed very well. And on top of that, the, the glitchy gameplay and the buggy gameplay it had. It was a poorly unoptimized mess. The sequel isn't anywhere, isn't as bad as the original. Um, oh, wait, oh wait, what is it? Um, the original one also had some of the most awful voice acting. I'm like, here's a preview. And why should I not go back there, Bray? Warriors. Hard ones. Not very friendly. One of them stay to wait your return. <laughs> like, if you've played Two World One for yourself, you know what I'm talking about. With the voice acting and the story. This one, uh, it's not as bad as the original. I mean, there are some improvements they did make to it. But it still ain't, ain't all that good. No, I will possibly play through this and get the original game as well. Play through the original game first and play this as well. But who knows. If I'm willing to sift through it like Pro Jared did when he played through the games. And now that these next three games will be a bit of a surprise to, to, every, to anyone. Especially Thomas Bybee, considering he's quite a fan of these. I have Batman Arkham Asylum, Game of the Year Edition, Batman Arkham City, and Batman Arkham Origins. All together. <laughs> I bought all three of these together. This game, 99 pence. This game, 99 pence. And this one, 49 pence. Quite a bargain, eh? The original, Bat and the original Arkham game, Arkham Asylum, it has the extra challenges include the joker challenges all the extra maps and some free glasses with it so i'm really pleased to have this including the extra maps as well this one oh no hang on this one i just got the game itself the dlc codes was already used and this game also it also just has the game itself as the DLC codes were already used. <clears throat> so for all of these, I actually got a good bargain out of them. I've only played just a few minutes of each of them to see them working and to register my first trophy unlocks on them. Arkham Asylum is fantastic. <clears throat> I've seen I've seen this game over my friend over my friend Thomas Bybee's house when I came over to his house to visit. Well, when I came over, when I visited his house one day, and I saw this, saw him play this, and I thought, holy mackerel, this looks actually really good. A really good Batman game. And back then, some of the Batman games, in, the, in like the 80s and the, in the 90s, were not all that good. But, when they eventually got to Batman Arkham Asylum, they finally got the talented, they got, they actually got a talented game studio that actually knew what to do with the Batman license. It was, it was a well executed game, really well done. And the same thing goes for Batman Arkham City, Rocksteady really, really knew what they were doing. They really took everything that, um, Arkham, that made Arkham Asylum really brilliant and it took it, and it took it to, and it took it to the extreme. Whereas Arkham Origins wasn't made by um, wasn't made by Rocksteady. It was done by I think Splash Damage. I'm not sure. At least in the back of it says one and one about it. Yeah, Splash Damage. Yeah, it's Garby Splash Damage or something. But either way, I got all these for a cheap price together. That's like two. I think that's like two pound forty something. Which is pretty good, which is, which I have to say, for all three of these, are very good. And they're truly some of the greatest, and Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City are truly some of the greatest games you'll ever pick up. 
and, and they're truly games worthy of the Batman name. <laughs> so, happy to have those. I also had Batman Arkham Asylum and I think Batman Arkham City, I'm not 100% sure, are also on the PS4 as well, so there will be tro separate trophy lists. And they're really well, and, they t and they're optimized for the PS4 hardware to take advantage of 1080p resolution at 60 frames per second. So that's cool. Alright, next game. Haunted the Demon's Forge. This one I picked up for 49 pence. This one had the, this one is the special edition, but when I opened the case, this, I think the special edition DLC cover, I think the DLC select is, was missing, and it's like thinking that the person who bought the game the last had already used the code. I'm, 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 I'm assuming, I'm assuming that's the case. Now in this game you're playing as two characters who are trying to um, they're trying to find their way through besieged towns and crawling dungeons. And you find out that there's um, that there's some kind of that there's some dungeon that spawned, and there's like this demon. And there's like this woman that some um, the main that the main guy dreams about. It tells him that some kind of disaster is upon him or something like that. I didn't pay too much attention to the story, unfortunately. <laughs> you can play this game alone or play with a friend. And it's also like the crucible as well. <laughs> oh well, so I played this one to see the, to see the game working. I played to beat the prologue chapter to get my first trophy. It's alright. It's not bad. It's, for, it's a third person hack and slash game, but you can also use long range long range bows as well. It's alright. It's not bad. Right, two 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 other games next are uh, from another popular series. Assassin's Creed Three and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I got these cheap price, forty nine pence each. These two games were forty nine pence. For why not? <laughs> and I also had the DLC code for um, Assassin's Creed Three, but I didn't get any any um any DLC content for this one. So no big deal, but no big deal here. Assassin's Creed 3 is another great entry in the Assassin's Creed series. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, I haven't played very... Um, there's another half decent one, I believe. Who knows? I've only played like just a few minutes of each, both of these. Once again, just to see the two of the games working. I'll actually play through them at some point, play through the Assassin's Creed games at some point because I did get Assassin's Creed 4 on the PS3 as, my, as one of the games I got from my PS with my PS3 system. So I have got to play through the Assassin's Creed games at one point. Including the original one which I have on the Xbox 360. I would have gotten the PS3 version of Assassin's Creed 1 but Assassin's Creed 1 on the PS3 doesn't have trophies. Only the Xbox 360 version has. So. No worries. So here we go. That's these two. Now, next ones is from a series I've had a bit of a relationship with, and I've been wanting to collect these for quite a while, for quite some time. And I did manage to pick these ones up for for, for quite a cheap price. They are Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain and Metal Gear Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Um, I got these two games, both for 99 pence each. <laughs> and both of them have all their DLC content, had all their DLC codes unused. So I thought, why not? I'll use them. And, and, and I got, and I'm, and I'm fully prepared to play the, this one with Metal Gear Solid, with Metal Gear Solid Online's content as well. And it's pretty good stuff. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is a hack and slash action game where it focuses on um, 
with the Metal Gear Solid's um, least likable protagonist, Raiden. But this one, they actually they take they did they actually changed Raiden into some into a into a into a, into a ninja slashing badass. <laughs> it was Simon Ninja badass. And he's way more cool, and he's definitely a lot cooler in this than he was in uh, Metal Gear Solid 2. <clears throat> where they introduced him, which caused them, like, insane controversy. And I played the prologue of this, and it's really, really good. So, seeing um, Raiden with, as a cyborg ninja armed with a high-frequency blade, you can cut through, like, Virtually anything, and it's pretty and it's pretty sweet and badass. And I actually quite like it. I, mean, I actually quite like this one. It's not bad, and the story is actually pretty is pretty all right. It's very typical Metal Gear Solid stuff, where it's where it's one plot, where it's one point is so where it's got we got we're thrown in with so many plot twists, and it becomes. Pretty confusing, but it is typically Metal Gear Solid for you. And here is Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. I actually got this as a free game on the PS4. And so now I have this, and I have completed, now I have got Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. This, take, this focuses, take, this takes place after what happened in Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. This is the real game of Metal Gear Solid 5, where it truly begins, and this is where everything really comes, and this is where all the really good stuff of Metal Gear Solid 5 really comes to play. And this was the final game in the Metal Gear Solid series, where Kojima was involved with, with the franchise's director, Hideo Kojima was involved, before and before, after, after the release of this game, Kojima got fired. From Konami, leading to all the um, Konami, all the fuck Konami memes, and it is understandable. Konami were assholes to Kojima, to poor Kojima, but at least Hideo Kojima hasn't given up, and he has opened up his own studio, and he's doing great with Death Stranding. And I hope to see what how Death Stranding turns out when it when it is fully when it's finally finished. <clears throat> but Metal Gear Solid Five is a great it's a fantastic stealth <clears throat> stealth game with a ton of things you can do with a ton of things you can do for a vast huge world. Build up a huge army that you can do so much things you can do. It will trade many different enemy territories, either, either on foot, on a horse, or in your cardboard, in your trusty cardboard box. <laughs> yep, inside of a cardboard box <laughs> to fool the enemy. And it's great. And it's really, really great. I absolutely love the Metal Gear Solid series. I want to play through. I want to collect all of the original Metal Gear Solid games, all the ones that were good. I might collect some of the spin-off ones as well, to, to fill in the extra pictures of the story. <clears throat> because the story in Metal Gear Solid, in Solid series, while confusing, it's still amazing. When you understand, when you take the time to understand it all. Just do not watch Dark Side Fields playthroughs of any Metal Gear Solid game. Unless you just want to typically kill your brain off. Because watching that guy play Metal Gear Solid, the original Metal Gear Solid, is just cringy. It is cringy to watch. Trust me, and trust me, I will talk about it on a blog, on a post on Facebook about it. <laughs> if I give myself time. And trust me. So these are so this is the amount of games I picked up all through all through May. What's that? Just then. Let me just check a second. Ah, oh, it's gonna stop recording.
Hang on. All right, is it bouncing? Stay. Uh, good. So yeah, like I, so yeah, like I was gonna say. Um. So this is all the games I've been purchasing all through May. One of them also, I, one of them I did buy in April, but still, did buy a couple of um, digital games as well, like. Um, Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds for the PS Vita, that's pretty good, I quite like that one. Uh, Sword Calibur into HD Online, it's pretty good. <clears throat> nah. So I have been busy, and I've also been busy with PlayStation um, Network Plus. In At the start of June next week, um, I'm going to be focusing on um, buying a PlayStation Plus subscription so that I can continue my support for the play so I can continue to play my games online because I do want to play um, so my f I do want to play continue playing my games online so I will be focusing on that um, as well as that some of the PSN Plus games is for free as well I've been playing a couple of those. And as well as been downloading a couple of PlayStation 4 games that I can, I, you can play for free as well, like Paladins, that's a good one. Uh, Let It Die, that's a decent one. Uh, Warface, and so on. And just to register some of those games onto my PlayStation account, onto my play PSN ID. So that way, maybe one day I'll play through those and get some trophies. And maybe do some reviews on those and oh, game reviews. I've been getting off lazy with game reviews. I haven't worked on a single one in a while all yet. But uh, don't panic, folks. This is to give you something to look forward to because I am going to hopefully get off my lazy ass and get back to work. Um, also, I will be taking this back. So I can't get this to work on my Xbox 360. It's not compatible with the Xbox 360. Uh, yes. So, um, maybe in future future plans after I do, um, I will I will be still be focusing on um, Tales of Asperia. This one, I'm still working on it. Um, just I need a bit of time just to give myself some. Maybe a time, a maybe a time, a day and time. So hopefully one day go through it. Maybe sometime next. Maybe sometime on Thursday I'll start going through the optional dungeons on it, and eventually go through, and eventually start um, New Game Plus. And without using any of the New Game Plus features, because I want to go through the whole game legitimate this time without cheating without using the DLC code without using the DLC this time to cheat me through it and um, and I will also be going through after Tales of Asperia's Platinum the Star Wars Battlefront games maybe maybe going through this one and also going through this one as well, the 2015 version. So I want to go through these ones because I think there will be a new Star Wars film coming out. So I want to be up to spec with the Star Wars story. And I will, and I do want to continue playing out online just to get all the, you know, all the, um, all the costumes and and all the um, challenges and everything. Um, but what else? Um, there's a lot. There's a lot to go through, so I'll take my time and think. Have a think about what to do and and such, and then I'll work on game reviews and top ten lists. I I have a schedule online. I'll possibly post it up when I get around to it. So um. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And so I'm sorry I haven't been doing some updates or videos in a while. It's because I've been busy with other games. Um, that I have been playing. I'm, not, I'm hoping next month um, I really get down to I really get buckle down and get to work. Uh, I hear E3 is going to start in June. 
all the e frees and all the e free announcements are going to start in June. And on top of that, Tales of Festival 2019 is going to start. I wonder if I'll watch that. If I can watch it live, I can. I like to see that. <clears throat> Mainly, I will be watching some of the e free announcements. Even though I'm going to be disappointed that there's no that there's no um, PlayStation. Um, show for the E3 because <clears throat> the PlayStation will have its own um, live show in um, PlayStation Experience that will happen later this year and so forth so uh, I don't think I can think about anything else to say as well and also a little message to Thomas Feige um, I, hear you're work I hear you're working on your um, Decidia NT rant well, I am going to be working on my. I am going to be playing through Dissidia 0 and 2, Dual Deaths and Final Fantasy, that one. I figured I should play that one first but, um, before I play the um, Dissidia NT and see how worse it could possibly get, to say the least. As, as long as I play through Dissidia 0 and 2 first, I'll have all the resources to play. Um, this is the Final Fantasy NT and give it the beating it deserves. And so this is going to be a lot of plan. There's going to be a lot going on, and so there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. So I think I'll wrap up this video for now, guys. So um, hope you guys enjoyed my videos of my games of me 2019 and. Whew, I got I got a lot to put away now, so hope you guys enjoyed this, and I check, and I will see you all in the next video. So I take care of yourselves, guys, and I'll see you all next time. So take care of yourselves and goodbye.